guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you are notified of all of my future videos. My name is Heather. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids and we are going into our 11th year homeschooling. Today, I am going to be sharing with you all about my homeschool cart organization. These are my two carts and they are the rolling carts from Target. Um, this one is actually a planning cart. Uh, which I am not completely done with. I have been using a basket to keep a lot of my planning supplies and morning time supplies in um, for easy transporting outside because I've been outside a lot uh, in the beautiful weather. Um, so this one is not really what we're focusing on today. This is the one that we are focusing on today. This is my homeschool cart and I had originally purchased these carts last year um, because I needed some place to put a bunch of stuff, obviously. And I had finally um, given into the hype of the planning cart storage. Now, when I got the carts all put together, I realized that these are not very tall, which I knew when I purchased them, but I was hoping that I would have a little bit more room <laughs> for my books because obviously, as you can see, most of what I am storing on this cart um, is books. And the reason is because we now have a, um, like an old bureau that we are using for craft supplies in our dining room area. And this is how I have it set up. Um, on this top shelf are all, most books that we are using pretty much daily. I have the kids' first science book for Emma and Jack Robotics, um, Emma's Spanish activity book, and actually, and her um, textbook in there and just her notes, her little notebook. And then I have her Wordly Wise, um, her daily language review, her cursive handwriting book. This is Analogies. One, if you have seen this, we were going to do this last year, and so it just gives little word lists that you can work on um, throughout the year. I have to look at how we're going to schedule it. I think I only have it like once a week is what I'm planning on doing because um, it's not a very big book, obviously. Cursive and then Life of Fred. We are using teaching textbooks for algebra this year, but I'm also having Emma do life of fred i thought i've wanted to try this for a really long time so i bought this book and we've only done one lesson so far it was super quick and easy and i really like it uh, this is for history of science for emma and jack the story of science this is the first book that we're going to be going through along with a couple of books down here and then we move into emma's elective this year which is the this entrepreneur course that I have kind of designed for her based on this book and some resources from Dave Ramsey and also um, a course that I purchased through the Ultimate Homeschooling Bundle. Um, that sale from several weeks ago there was a course in that as well which I'm going to be using. Then we move into Jack's section, and the first is his Singapore math that we do every day, and a notebook that I believe is just him um, writing stuff. Then we move into his Wordly Wise, Daily Language Review, and his Cursive Handwriting book. Then we move into Lucy's section. She has her Daily Language Review. These are just um, from... Um, Evan Moore. They're just little workbooks from Evan Moore. She ha She's using the Handwriting Without Tears, uh, Yellow My Printing Book, and then the 1A Math for her. There is no instructor's guide with the 1A. We just go through, essentially we just go through the workbook, and if she needs some extra practice, I will pull out the textbook. These are the two poetry books that we are using this year. Book of Animal Poetry is Lucy's book, I think, and then Book of Nature Poetry is for Emma and Jack. And I just read it all together. I read like a couple of pages each morning. We don't really do a poetry tea time anymore. We used to, but now I find that it's easier to just read it first thing in the morning. And we tend to do long reading lunches where I'm reading um, our read alouds. Then I have this clipboard, which honestly just has lists of all of the books that we're going to be using this year. These are from the instructor's guides 
that uh, come with sunlight. So I have each of their curriculum, that just the books that are uh, associated with that curriculum so that I can then go in each month during my monthly planning day and pull the books that we're going to be using for the next month or six weeks uh, off of this list because they're all in order. Then I have the two Brave Writer resources that we're going to be using to start off. We're going to be doing The Green Ember for, em for Emma and Jack. Uh, this is an arrow, and so there's copy work, and then why this passage, what to note, how to teach this passage. This is an older uh, version of the arrow. They have updated these. Um, not this particular one, but they are coming out with new books every year. And every time they have new books, they update them. So each week you have um, a specific copywork passage and then uh, what to note and how to teach the passage and some little activities and fun things to do. We really, really enjoy this. And then Lucy is doing Charlotte's Web this, uh, I think she's starting in September. But I printed this out and uh, obviously coil bound it. And it is a dart, which is, I believe, for seven and eight. So she's a little bit young to start this because she isn't seven yet. But I already owned this from buying the dart package last year. So I wanted to try it out. We already read the book. <laughs> Lucy and I already read Charlotte's Web. So I thought it would be good. I'm not sure if we will do much more than the copy work and just having it as copy work, not dictation. She's way too little for dictation in my opinion. Um, so the copy work and then maybe a couple of the little projects that are in here and just highlighting some of the important points uh, with you know punctuation and uh, capital letters and you know spelling things etc. I don't expect a whole lot from my little kids when it comes to them writing themselves but I do find that copy work is really helpful. So I have this little what is this magazine holder I guess and that is where I am keeping the brave writer resources so because i only have two things in here right now i do still have the daily summer activities that we have been using this past uh you know a couple of months for the kids that we got from evan moore i really liked these it gave the kids something extra to do but i put them in here because these two little brave writer dart and arrow they're so small i've got dog hair on them <laughs> uh they they would just flop over in this magazine holder. So that is what I have on the top shelf. It's most of my tall books that we're going to be using most days. All of this stuff is pretty much used daily. Um, I think maybe Wordly Wise is only like a few days a week. And so I think we're going to be, we're going to be alternating Wordly Wise with the handwriting. I think think we'll see we have not started our full schedule yet um, then down on the bottom here I have quick answers to tough questions this is a book that I'm going through with Emma and Jack and not Lucy um, if I can get it out see that's the struggle <laughs> getting the stuff out so it just has uh, questions and answers and scripture references in it so we just read a little bit each I kind of alternate it I guess um, some days I am reading this book to Jack and Emma and sometimes I am just reading the ology to everybody and then Disappointment with God is a book that Emma and I are going through together and I've already messed up <laughs> all of my books that I had in here. These are the two read alouds that we're currently doing. Uh, Mr. Max, The Book of Lost Things, and The Mysteries of Maisie Hitchens, The Case of the Stolen Sixpence, which I'm almost done with Lucy, although my kids listen to pretty much all the books. String, Straight Edge, and Shadow is our first 
uh, one of the first history books that we're going to be working on, then Archimedes and the Door of Science, Ida Scudder, and then we move into books that my kids are going to be reading. These are the books they are currently reading. Emma's reading The Thief and Jack is reading By the Great Horn Spoon right now and then Lucy's Little Readers. And then next, Jack is going to read The Wright Brothers and Emma is going to read Going Solo. Then I have these big fat notebook reference books and I really like these. They're super cheap on Amazon. They're like seven or eight dollars, but um, they're broken down into little chapters and then there's questions at the end of each chapter and the answers are on the back. So um, I have my kids periodically go through different chapters. Well, I've had Emma do it in the past and now um, that Jack is also in middle school, I'm going to have him also do this. I think that it's good to just have a little bit extra information especially if they have questions, um, specifically with math or English. I, I have the American history and world history ones as well, but we don't refer to those as often. And then Jack is doing computer science and coding this year. So he started that. He just goes through a chapter. Three days a week is what we decided would work well for him. Um, and then he'll answer, he answers the questions. He just writes out the answers in a little one subject notebook, you know, one of those 25 cent notebooks from, um, Staples or Target or whatever. And then I just check his answers or I have him check his answers. And this is not really like a graded subject for him, but it's just to help him understand more about computers. And then I do have another book that is, all about Python, which he really wanted to learn this year. Um, but we are starting with this book. So everything you need to ace computer science and coding in one big fat notebook. And they've recently come out with, um, I think, high school level books as well. So you can check those if you want. This flunked book is just an extra book that Emma recently read in her free reading time. She often has several books going at once, but I have to put that in my teacher planner so that I keep track of all the books that she reads. Then her Spanish English dictionary for her Spanish class. And then the reason the ology is over here, this is our other Bible um, that we do every morning. I read a story in scripture every morning. It's not over here because it doesn't easily come out when it's over here. Um, so I've got it over there. It's probably a little too tall to be on this shelf. That one and also the quick answers to tough questions, but I kind of wanted similar subjects together. I don't know. Um, and then on the bottom, I have this little uh, cubby tub thing that I got from Target and this just has uh, some fine tip wet erase markers cubes for Lucy for her math and this is for the kids math protractors and stuff um, language arts bingo what is this blending uh, and then these I think are from September and co yes um, little character cards, which I thought would be fun to use this year, uh, you know, maybe like one a week or something, just to sort of concentrate on character. And then I do like that each set has, let me see if I can find it at the beginning now. It has a little card about what the cards are for and how to use them. And then it has all of the character qualities that this set includes. And I got all three sets that she has available. I think it's an Etsy store. I can't remember. I will leave a link if I can figure it out where I purchased them. Sometimes I see random things and I buy them immediately because I really like them and um, I don't pay attention to where I'm buying them from. So probably a Google search would help. Um, and then a ruler because I'm slowly finding some of our rulers. We should have six rulers, but I found one. So that's at least something. Um, I'm not big on having these cubbies because it's not 
on on the cart I mean because it's not very easy to find stuff but really this is mainly math manipulatives and tools that we need for math and then a couple other things then the rest is just some extra note cards and sticky notes and gel pens uh, for Lucy and then I get these little notebooks off of Amazon they're super cheap and they come like in a maybe a package of 10 or something um, for field journals, just for extra paper for the kids and my pencil sharpener. What kind is this? I love this. I've had this maybe for five years now and it's going strong. <laughs> so definitely recommend. So this is our homeschool cart, which right now is in my office, but it's not going to stay here. I will show you where it's going to go. So my plan is to put the homeschool cart here. Um, it may bother me to have more stuff out in the open, in which case I will just roll it into my office in the evenings. Um, so that is one section of what we keep out. Then I have this little canvas bag, which I am storing our binders in at the moment. It's easy for me to move outside if I want to, because we are still doing some school outside or to put it in a closet if I want it out of the way but it's easier for me to just have all of these binders of worksheets and instructor's guides, et cetera, together, um, instead of trying to find them all over the house. <laughs> just makes it easier, obviously. Um, I have the kids' planners in here. This is Emma's. She has the Erin Condren Academic Planner. Lucy, I just started her with the Erin Condren Kids Planner, which she absolutely loves. And then I have some twistable crayons from Erin Condren which are really good quality crayons if you want some crayons. They're so smooth to draw with. They don't skip at all. I really like these. Um, Lucy is using them for her planner, um, all the pictures and stuff that she's drawing. And then this is just a little planner that I got off of Amazon for Jack, and it has everything broken down into 15-minute increments for the times he wanted an hourly planner and this is what is working because he's able to put his uh what he has to do each day in as as he wants it done throughout the day um, this purple binder is my instructor's guides if you watched my vbs video where i was putting together all of, all of the instructor's guides i talked about this briefly this is the first six weeks of instructor's guides and curriculum information for all of the curriculum that we're using. And this is just so that I can work out of one binder and I'm not too <laughs> worried about how much is there and um, it's, it's just easier for me. And then we move into the kids binders. This first one is Lucy's Language Arts. She will not use all of the language arts from Sunlight, but we do a good portion of it. The um, copy work and little activities. Um, we, I used it for both Emma and Jack, so I will continue to use it with Lucy as well. And then I have Jack's Science H, the robotics and mechanics stuff, which is fun for him. And then he is doing language arts G this year. I think that's what it is. Yes, so he is doing language arts G. I don't think that I put that in his curriculum video, but I did have it already because we have all of the <laughs> sunlight levels from pre-K or P3-4 all the way up through level 100. So um, we have plenty of language arts information to work with. Um, so he's going to be doing some of this not all of it. I pick and choose based on what we need. Um, then I have Emma's language arts. She's doing language arts J along with Brave Writer and her science is science H. She is doing that with Jack and then her Spanish um, binder. That is everything. I thought that was going to be a really quick video. It was not. I'm. It's impossible for me to make a short video. So those are the things that we are keeping upstairs. We do have a homeschool room where all of our homeschool materials live. And I just pull like the first four, I pull about four to six weeks of material 
at a time and keep it upstairs because my kids prefer to do school upstairs. Right now we've been outside a lot because the weather is so nice, but they tend to work well at the dining room table instead of at individual desks, which is what we have in the basement and also on the couch for read alouds. And when I'm reading all of the things, that's what we want to do. So eventually I do have some other ideas for our basement homeschool organization and comfort levels, et cetera, but those are still in the works and it will be a while. So this is how we're going to be starting our homeschool year. And I think that is everything. <laughs> So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. I would love to see what you are using your homeschool carts for. I know I did a vlog a while back about how I was struggling to figure out how I wanted the homeschool cart to be organized, but I finally figured out something that worked well for us. Um, and I know that some of you have bigger carts or use them for art supplies or other things. So um, leave me a comment below and let me know how you are doing getting ready for the new homeschool year. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.